That's OK. So surely then there are these bugs, and that's fine. And so think back. Coming up is perhaps the algorithm that CS50 is known for, which I, I certainly inherited from some professor's past. But you pick up this here phone book. Yeah, you don't see those very often anymore. <laughs> They're really hard to find. In fact, we've had a, uh, circulate calls for uh, donations online of phone books in towns that actually still print these things. And we've actually gotten several. So thank you to all the people who uh, sustained the shipping of just pure paper to us. I know, to but they're us. not even cheap to ship because they're so heavy. And the bigger, the better, too, for the demonstration. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, if you just take a phone book, the goal here is to demonstrate through dividing and conquering uh, this perhaps the most intuitive of algorithms, but an algorithm that you might not necessarily call an algorithm because it really is just common sense to most people. And so what we're trying to do in this case, I would argue, is capture again some familiarity that students already have, whether with binary on the one hand or now with algorithms on the other hand, and start to formalize their understanding of that so that they can leverage it in new contexts. Right. And in this phone book, we're looking for uh, Mike Smith, who was actually the professor of CS50 when I took CS50 just before um, you took over in 2007. Um, but the choice of Mike Smith is actually a strategic one. Like there's a, there's well, a, a reason nice behind. There's a nice, of course, it's that. But there's also a strategic reason behind why we choose um, well, to search S for him in particular. Yeah. S is just kind of nice. So if you search by last name, it means I can do one flip to the right, do another flip to the right, claim to have gone slightly too far, such that I end up in the T section, for instance, so that I can then double back to look for Smith. You don't want to pick like M, because right. then the algorithm's over pretty It fast. works right away. So it gives you a chance to explore all of the different Although students have not yet encountered this term, conditional branches yeah, of, the, exactly. uh, of the algorithm. But there's a lead up, of course. We don't dive right into the intuition. Instead, we, I propose verbally, well, why don't I just look for Mike one page at a time? And it's a good question to ask, especially to make sure students are indeed following along, because invariably someone might think or say, um, no, that's incorrect. And here we have an opportunity to introduce the distinction right from the get-go between correctness or design or quality of design, um, not to mention other uh, axes along which you might evaluate some problem solving. But it's indeed correct to go one page at a time. But it's not correct, of course, to go two at a time because always, almost always there's one student who realizes, wait a minute, what if Mike is between two pages as you're going by uh, two at a time? Right. So that's a good opportunity, too, for a branch. Like, well, if you hit the page right after Smith, Double back one page, right? If you have a certain, yeah, you can handle that. That's the best part too. Everyone's always so oh, the dramatic talk. So impressed when I tear that phone book down the, down that spine. <laughs> spine. I think actually a couple of years ago there was a it, there was a piece of tape that ended up on yeah, the. There've been uh, some failures. <laughs> It's unclear if that was malicious that year or not. Someone reinforced the phone book before I went on. That's not fair. To lecture. I have struggled once in a while, but all the better. It makes for a funny demo. And it's a Do nice you practice beforehand? No, we don't have enough phone books to practice. So it's usually fun to like toss half the phone book at someone in the audience gently if they'd like to keep it. Yeah, and no, that's a fun souvenir. But this is the key point in the end, and you don't want to flip again and again and again. It'll quickly become tedious. You want to end up with a theoretically one single page on which Mike either is or is not, at which point the algorithm ends. But there's an opportunity next, and you see the glimpse of it here on the screen, to also, through this demo, introduce pseudocode. Because it's pretty intuitive to flip to the middle, keep flipping half and half and half and tearing. But to now start to slap some structure on that, I think, is a helpful exercise to bridge these worlds of just talking through intuitive problems to formalizing some actual form of code. Right, expressing it in a language that, uh, that students are familiar with, and even uh, adopting, as we'll soon see, conventions of indentation to suggest uh, what they might see later on down the road with C um, or other programming languages that use indentation to, uh, to markate different blocks of code as we do there on line four. And even here, it's a simple thing, but it's an opportunity to reinforce what we just talked about previously insofar as it's natural to start counting from zero when you're using binary since all of your bits are zeros by uh, perhaps initially, and so this is a nice subtle way of reinforcing that. It, unfortunately, it's a bit misleading too because most every text editor these days just naturally starts numbering lines at one. So I have sort of misgivings there, but I feel it's easier to just start from zero here rather than suddenly change tack just minutes after that particular demo. And this was actually a judgment call too. So for years have we used in step seven and step 10 this go oh, back go to, to syntax, yes. which is effectively go to in a lot of languages. But I'm okay with that because I think if you're numbering the lines, it's super readable here. And even though we don't necessarily introduce formally the go to statement, um, and indeed don't certainly, and we don't encourage it in class, um, it's just a very natural way of expressing a loop. Yeah, if you tried to use um, English to structure, I think that 
those lines of codes, line threes to eleven, there as a loop, I think it would be a bit more convoluted. Indeed.